Well, good day, everyone, and thank you for coming back to the next video. So I think I'm going to change my tune here a little bit and uh, stray away from the planet stuff. But uh, this whole planet thing, I mean, this is what just makes me crazy over the years, knowing that uh, they have changed the way that our sky looks. And um, trying to explain this to people who have not looked up lately, and they just take it for granted. Okay, so I want to show just a couple things. You know, we're all wondering what is going on, you know, and and what, what what's the plan that the Lord has for us. And I just, I have a couple things I've talked about over the years. I'm just going to bring them up. But I also want to speak about the second book of Estros. We're going to go through it here a little bit. Um, there's some interesting things. Please download this document I've created. Um, it's 16 chapters. It's like 33 pages. And the the amazing thing about this book is I know it, it's an apocryphal book and, and we struggle to believe whether this is actually the Word of God. Look, my thought is this. Read this book. Read what's here and then compare it with existing scripture, right? And then see where we get little bits of clues that provide better insight to the scriptures that we already have that kind of don't make sense. And that that's how I use this book. I'm not using this book to... To determine what doctrinal truth is. I'm using this book as sort of a reference book to to see, well, you know, wh why does it, what's this idea of mother and good nurse and Zion and being born from above and the Jerusalem above, all these references to the new city Jerusalem, the kingdom of God we see that Jesus talks about. That, that stuff's all in here. And there's a parable in here that I would suggest you guys read. It speaks about the construction of the new city Jerusalem. I think it's an incredible thing that it, it, it's it's a mystery that's going to come alive here shortly when this new city Jerusalem makes a showing as we learn about in the Bible. See, th this is the part of the Bible that we don't read. Hold on a second, guys. My dog's just bursted in. Sorry about that. My dog's just determined that they had to come into the room where I was. Anyway, so this Psalm 48, uh, you know, this idea that the kings of the earth are going to look up in the sky and they're going to see this city of our God, this holy mountain, this beautiful elevation, the joy of the whole earth, this Mount Zion in the far north. This holy mountain, we, we learn about the holy mountain, you know, from the Bible when it talks about, I'm just going to go on a little bit of a digression here. Um, the, these words are used. I don't know. We we capture what they really mean. You know. So John in the twenty first chapter of the book of Revelation. Here it's a holy city, a new Jerusalem. It's a holy city. It's a mountain. It's a here it is. Come. The angel says to John, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. And he carried me away in spirit to a great high mountain, showed me a holy city coming down out of, out from God. This holy mountain, this is what is the new city, Jerusalem. Okay, um, let me think where I wanted to start. Before I get too far along, I just want to make mention of a, a need from our friends in Kenya. I got this message from from Joshua, Pastor Joshua. This is the uh, the orphanage that um, my one dog is determined to dig into the carpet, guys. Sorry, I'm going to keep going. Um, from Pastor Joshua here, and he's he's asking that um, if we could consider prayerfully consider helping this guy, helping them out. It turns out that uh, you know they're an orphanage with uh, 25 or 30 kids, and it turns out that the health inspector came and made a visit. And they're they're recommending that they get a dining hall, and there's a couple other things. And in the past, we have helped them many times, thousands and thousands of dollars. You guys have all um, helped them build a um, add up, like build a kitchen, build a bathroom, um, install electricity. Um, I remember their first kitchen was a hut that would you know the cook would sit on the ground and make the food. It was it was really horrific conditions. But guys, once again, you know, he's asking if you guys can consider helping out. Here's a letter for him. Please download this letter and if if you're led by Holy Spirit to um uh to provide a donation that would be great. Please please here's an email address for jo Pastor Joshua. Email him and you you can talk to him directly. Form a uh, you know just connect up with him directly. And he can speak to you about their needs. 
And, uh, you know, people within, the com- within their own country help them out some. But really it's uh, him, his wife, I'm sorry, his wife and his mother and his siblings take care of these 30 kids. I'll leave a link with this information, guys, but thank you. Okay, so let me, let me jump here to the second book of Estras, written by Ezra. And, and um, when, you, when you read the beginning of this book, there's, a, there's an introduction. I don't want to spend too much time on this, but right away we see a, a division. We see Judah and we see Israel spoken about. So even this book speaks about the two houses of Israel. And right away it starts speaking about Judah, how Judah has essentially rejected God. We know that this is the case now. I mean, the Jews today have rejected their Messiah. Um, and you can read here, this is God himself speaking. He says, I gathered you as hen, a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but now what sh- shall I do to you? I will cast you out of my presence. He says, you, your house is left desolate. You, Judah, your house is left desolate. And this is the same words that Jesus had um, in Matthew 23. So whether this book is is inspired and it's from the Lord or not it sure contains a lot of the same information that's in the 66 books of our Bible that we have today so I've added that section in there then when you get to chapter 2 it speaks about the Assyrian we see the same reference to the Assyrian in Isaiah I think it's 13 same thing so woe to you Assyrian who conceal the unrighteous within you a wicked nation remember what I did to Sodom and Gomorrah you know, and here's a reference from Jubilee 16 about what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah. And it says this, it says, Thus says the Lord to Ezra, Tell my people that I will give them the kingdom of Jerusalem, the new city of Jerusalem, which I was going to give to Israel, the church. The church is going to have to be here, stay here, for the most part. The lukewarm church is going to have to be refined. Moreover, I will take back myself their glory. I will take back myself their glory. That's the little ones and will give them the others and give these everlasting habitations I think to the bride okay and then you read this there's this theme in the second book of Estras where this mother it says mother embrace your children bring them up with gladness as a dove this mother is a reference to the place that Jesus said he said truly truly I tell you this is Jesus telling Nicodemus in John 3 3 truly truly I tell you you must be born from above if you want to see the kingdom of God. And then Galatians 4, verse 26, Paul tells us that our mother is Jerusalem above. So based upon the words of Jesus and Paul, this mother is the heavenly city, the new Jerusalem, where we will one day, very soon, hopefully, be born in spirit from above with a spirit body. So mother, this is basically based upon the words of Paul, and I wish I put them in here. I didn't. Mother, embrace your children. Bring them up with gladness as a dove. Let me just show that real quick. I really wish I would have put that in here. Galatians 4, and Paul is speaking about the new covenant, covenant represented by Sarah and the old covenant represented by Hagar. He says, now Hagar is like Mount Sinai an earthly mountain. She corresponds to present-day earthly Jerusalem, that dirt hill over there. She is in slavery with her children. But the Jerusalem above is free, and she is our mother. Okay, She is our mother, and that's exactly what we see here. I Just pretend I stuck that in there. Mother, the Jerusalem above, embrace your children, and I will raise up from the dead from their places and bring them out of their tombs, because I will recognize, I recognize my name on them. Do not fear, mother of children, new city Jerusalem. For I have chosen you, says the Lord. I will send you help, my servants, Isaiah and Jeremiah, and I will fill your children with joy. Okay, Good nurse, mother, nourish your children, strengthen their feet. Not one of my servants whom I have given you will perish, for I will require them from among your number. Do not, this is for us, guys, do not be anxious, for when the day of tribulation and anguish comes, others who are on the earth shall weep and be sorrowful, but you shall rejoice and have abundance. The nations shall envy you. Rejoice, O mother, O heavenly city, the new city Jerusalem, with your children, because I will deliver you, says the Lord. Remember your children that's, that sleep, because I will bring them out of the hiding places of the earth, and I will show the mercy to them, for I am a merciful, 
for I am merciful, says the Lord. Okay? Then I, Ezra, received a command from the Lord on Mount Horeb to go to Israel, the church. Okay? And these are, this is when we're going to be told to go to the church and give them the message from the Lord. They're not going to want to hear what we have to say. This is Ezekiel 33. This is Ezekiel 3. The watchmen are gone. And it says, wait for your shepherd. This is going to be the message we're going to give to the left behind Christians. Wait for your shepherd. He will give you everlasting rest. Okay? He will come at the end of the age when it's close at hand. Be ready for your rewards of the kingdom because the perpetual light will shine on you forevermore. Flee from the shadow, that darkness event of this age. That's the darkness at noon that Amos 8 speaks about. Rise, stand erect. See the number of those who have been sealed at the feast of the Lord. I think that feast of the Lord, we're going to speak about it here in a minute. This is why I did this video, is during the Feast of Tabernacles. And I don't know the calendar the Lord's using, but it'll be at the Feast of Tabernacles. Those who have departed the shadow of this age, this upcoming darkness event, they will have received glorious garments from the Lord. Take again your full number, O Zion. It's the sons of Zion, born from above, the Jerusalem above that Paul speaks about. And close the list of your people. This is the, you know, uh, when the uh, fullness of time comes. The number of your children whom you desired is now complete. Okay? And this is where Ezra has a vision of Jesus along with the 144,000 on the heavenly Mount Zion. And they are being crowned and they receive palms. Okay, so I, Ezra, saw on Mount Zion. Mount Zion is the top of the new city, Jerusalem, where the throne of the Lord is. A great multitude that I could not number, and they were all praising the Lord with songs. In their midst was a young man, that's Jesus, of great statue, taller than all the others. And on the head of them he placed a crown, but he was more exalted than they. And I was held spellbound. Then I asked the angel, Who were these, my Lord? He answered said to me, These are they who have put off mortal clothing and have put on the immortal and have confessed the name of God. They are now they are being crowned and they receive palms. Now why do I say Tishri 15? Well, let's go to Leviticus 23. In Leviticus 23, there are there's two types of Feast of Tabernacles. I'm going to go there real quick. I know this is not talked about much, but there is a kind of a second Feast of Tabernacles that's spoken about in the scriptures. Okay, Feast of Booths. Here's the regular Feast of Booths Okay, for seven days. These are the appointed feasts which you shall proclaim as times of... So these, verse 37, these above are these appointed feasts, right? Feast of Booths, Feast of Atonement, Feast of Trumpets, you know, you guys, Feast of Weeks, Feast of First Fruits. But there is a Feast of the Lord that happens below this. Okay? Out of the blue, we have it all over again. See, people read verse 39 and on, and they just think, oh, it's the same thing. They think it's the same thing as the Feast of Booths. I'd say it's not. It's a feast of the Lord. It's a feast of the ingathering. Let's read it. On the 15th day of the seventh month, when you have gathered in the produce of the land, this is not the Feast of Booths. You shall celebrate a feast of of the Lord for seven days. On the first day, you shall have a solemn rest. On the eight, see, it sounds like the Feast of Booths, but to me, this is the this is the end of the Church Age feast. This has never been celebrated before. They may think they're celebrating, but they're not celebrating what the Lord is really having us do. You shall celebrate a feast of the Lord for seven days. On the first day, you shall have a solemn rest. On the eighth day, there will be a solemn rest, and you shall take on the first day, Tishri fifteen. The fruit of the splendid trees, the branches of palm, the leafy trees, the willows, you know, the whole thing. You shall celebrate this feast for seven days. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my document. So here it is. They are celebrating a feast of the Lord here. Uh, where is it written? It's written here somewhere. Anyway, okay, you can see. And they receive these palms. So I, I have put in here as a reference Leviticus 23, what I just read. Then I said to the angel, says Ezra, who was this young man placing crowns on them and putting palms in their hands? And he said, he is the son of God whom they have confessed in the world. Go now, tell my people how great and how many are the wonders of the Lord God that you have seen. So this group of people is celebrating a feast of the Lord.
here, right here. Here, here it is. I'm, I'm going back to the beginning here. I want to read this again. Second Estrus 2. They're on Mount Zion, and they are rise and stand, erect, see the number of those who have been sealed at the feast of the Lord. Well, that's that feast, that Leviticus 23 feast, which is not the feast of booths. It's the feast of the ingathering of the fruits where palms are received. This is not the Feast of Booths. This is a feast that's occurring in the heavenly Mount Zion, although Leviticus 23 doesn't mention that, but 2nd Estras does. This is a festive gathering, a first fruits gathering, Hebrews 12, Jeremiah 31, which I've spoken about many times. Okay, so this Feast of the Lord is going to occur on Mount Zion in heaven, and then all of a sudden, Ezra is told, go, go back to earth, go, tell my people how great and how many wonders are of the Lord, your God that you have seen. Well, let's go back to my Psalm 48 Bible study and see if we if this sounds familiar. Okay, so what we see in Psalm 48 is we see that the city of our God, the city of our Lord, this holy mountain, high and lifted up, this this not a dirt hill in earthly Jerusalem. Here, the kings of the earth they come and they assemble. Right? They see this thing up in the sky. They freak out. They panic. They take flight. Trembling took hold of them. Anguish as a woman in labor. Right? Obviously, my question here is, would the kings of the earth be running in fear and panic from a catching a glimpse of an earthly dirt hill located in Jerusalem, the same city that's referred to as Sodom in Revelation 8? And why? Okay, i, I, I got to hold back my pride a little bit, guys. So... And so here, we, you, you get, it, it changes here. It says, as we have heard, so we have seen in the city of our Lord of hosts, in the city of our God, which God will establish forever. Here's the tour that we're going to be taking of heaven. Okay. Walk about the new city, Jerusalem, Mount Zion, go around her, number her towers, consider well her ramparts, go through the citadels that you may tell the next generation, the second fruits, that this is our God, our God forever and ever. He will guide us forever. This right here, that you may tell the next generation. We just read that in Second Estras. Go, Second Estras now. Okay, guys, I'm, I'm I'm switching around here. But go after this festive gathering at the height of Mount Zion in heaven, where people are going to get their crowns. Go tell my people how great. And how many wonders of the Lord God that are that you have seen when you have walked about Zion and numbered her towers of this heavenly city, come back to the earth and tell people about the wedding that's going to, soon going to be coming. See, th this early event, this early event here, this gathering is what's mentioned in Luke 14. I have a Bible study. I'll bring it up real quick. A tale... I call it a tale of two banquets. I'm sure you guys are familiar with these two parables. Okay? A tale of two banquets. Okay. Many people read the Bible and they, they read Luke 14 and say, oh, that's the same thing as Matthew 22. Okay, Matthew 22 is not the same thing. This is this is when the invitation is going to go out. Right? Here. This is the invitation to the wedding banquet. This is a wedding feast. The people, the servants, go out and they're going to invite those who are both bad and good to the wedding banquet. They're, these are going to be the guests to the wedding. But Luke 14 is, an, is a meal. It's a banquet in heaven. It's before this Matthew 22 thing. It sounds like it, but it's not. But the difference here is, it says this, the servants are told. It says, go tell this servant, singular, Go out quickly to the streets and lanes of the city and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. See, the the poor, the crippled, and the blind and the lame, they don't give an they don't get an invitation. They're simply stolen away. They're rescued, and that's we see the same thing here in Jeremiah thirty one. The blind, the lame, the pregnant woman. See, here's Jeremiah thirty one, a part of the Bible that nobody reads for the most part. And here's the words of Jesus in Luke 14. It's the same event. And see, we learn that Ephraim is God's firstborn. This is the first fruits gathering at the height of Mount Zion. I talk about Jeremiah 31 all the time. Hebrews 12 is the same thing. Anyway, I just wanted to offer that up. 
I can't tell you how many people, pastors, I've asked, you know, have you, have you read both of these? Do you, do you see a difference? And they just think they're the same thing. They're not. See, look, it, at Matthew 22, the parable of the wedding feast, what does the Lord do when he's done with these people who don't want to come? He sends fire and brimstone down on them. Where does it say? Yeah, he sent his troops and destroyed those murderers and burned the city. I mean, if, if somebody would say to you, some you know skeptic, and say, hey, uh, Jesus told a parable about God inviting people to a wedding banquet, and the people who didn't want to come to his wedding feast, he's going to destroy them? What kind of God do you have? I mean, that that's look what look what the Lord's doing here. I mean, yeah, he is. <laughs> so there's a lot of things in the Bible that you know. If if I was a skeptic or an atheist, I'd say like, what kind of God do you worship? It sounds kind of harsh, but you know, God gets to make the rules in these. Obviously, this is we, we know the, the real context of Matthew 22. But anyway, the point is, Luke 14 is an is a not a wedding meal. It's like a rehearsal dinner. And the blind and the lame and the little children and all those folks are going to be taken. So if you have people, you know, autistic children or people in wheelchairs that don't even know they're here, the Lord's just going to bring him. They're going to be brought in immediately and attend this and be healed. And they're going to realize, you know, somebody might say, well, you know, did they know Jesus? Did they utter his, did they have faith? No, it doesn't, that doesn't really matter at this point. An autistic or retarded child is going to be taken in immediately anyway. Okay. Um, I think that's it for now. How long am I into this thing? 21 minutes. So I would continue to read Second Estras, and you can read. I got the everything highlighted about this city, this new city, Jerusalem. That's spoken about. Um, I want to show you a couple areas. There's a there's a parable in here. Um, about it. Yeah, here. For indeed, the time will come. Let's see, where are we right now? We're in Second Estra seven. Okay. For indeed, the time will come when the signs that I have foretold to you will come to pass, and that city that is now not seen shall appear. See, the new city Jerusalem is going to appear much earlier than people think. See, everybody thinks it's going to appear at Revelation 21, a thousand years. No. It's going to appear now. It's going to freak people out. Okay? And the land that was now hidden shall be disclosed. Now, this is where I have a little bit of a... I'm thinking, whoa, what does that mean? So we have a city that's going to appear. And then we have a land that's now hidden by chemtrails and other things, that will be disclosed. I think this is planet Nibiru. I think this is planet heaven, to be honest with you. And the, way, the reason I think that is, I've, you know, I've already talked about this before. Um, where am I still? Yeah. Let me go here and just quickly show you. This Amaru system, this planet X system, I talk about all the time, and I know folks, some folks struggle to understand this. It's okay. We're all gonna we'll all know the truth here shortly. If I go to the go to this video, I talk about it here. Um, yeah, the Amaru system. This this is the Great Red Dragon system. Yeah, I showed this last time. It's a planetary system that some group I don't know did this animation. It's a it's a brown dwarf star with seven planets and a bunch of moons. But the sixth planet is is what they call Nibiru. I know this is way out there, guys. It's just a... It's just a, a hunch on my part. You guys can watch this. Um, here it is, right here. So, this Amaru system has a sixth planet named Nibiru. It's got two moons. And it, at least in this animation, it looks like Earth. I have a sense that this is this disclosed land that second Astros chapter 7 is speaking about and the land that is now hidden shall be disclosed okay and you guys can go to my other video you can read about that and I, I speak about 
you know, the, where, the, where this animation came from. Um, but with that, guys, I'm going to drop off here. I do want to say a few things about this coming week. Um, you know, I know that some of my subscribers don't like it when I mention modern day prophetic words. I, I understand that. It, it can be a little, because I know that a lot of the modern prophets have gotten everything wrong about Trump and all this other stuff, but however that's going to work out. But Wendy Lee had a prophetic word back in um, August of 2017, and it was right before the September 23 sign. And when you read this word back in 2017, she basically says, God is basically saying in this word, hey guys, um, I'm, I'm being all lackadaisical about it, but the word basically says, essentially, nothing's going to happen to some extent with this upcoming sign. Don't be discouraged. Basically what? You know, do not listen to man's thoughts and opinions. You will know my truth if you come to my seek my son and seek his face. Um, so, I find that interesting. It says the September 23 sign is about to be revealed, but pay close attention to what your what Papa says. There is nothing new under the sun. And he says, what happened when my son Yeshua was born? This is my commentary about what happened. John the Baptist leaped in the womb. He was born six months before Jesus. The wise man came. Herod came and killed the babies. Shepherds were in the field. Angels were in the sky. Um, I, I'm not sure what to make of that. So, but then there was this reference here. It says, I am about... To have my this is now this is the, the part where the Lord Jesus says a word I am about to have my army in its different ranks and all shall see my glory upon them I have always taken that this part to read that sometime before September 23 that's when that's going to occur and obviously today is September 28th uh, it's just a hunch okay now next week we have a full moon on the 20th and we have the last day of summer on the 22nd okay so you know we're all just patiently waiting with that guys I'll let you go have a great day and God bless you